Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Um, I'm missing a couple of commenters who normally comment a lot, so I'm just hoping you're okay. I have mentioned it. Hope you're okay out there. Um, thank you for my new subscribers this week. I really appreciate it. And again, I ha have said before, if I haven't replied to any of your comments, it's not that I've been rude. I just I haven't seen them and if they're on an old story that I've done for some reason it's just not showing up the comments just are they're not showing up so sometimes I don't see them for like a month after it's really hard I don't know how it works at all so I'm not being rude um but yeah thank you for all my uh subscribers this week I do really appreciate it now <clears throat> there's been a story well not a story um a, a documentary that's come out quite recently um, about the honour killing of Banaz Mahmood um, who was killed back in 2006. Now, because there's been a lot on this story already, um, I'm actually looking at a different one that, was, that happened three years previous to Banaz. Um, now I did watch, if you haven't watched it, it's called Honor, um, and it's about Banaz Mahmood. And oh, it's, it's, it's just such a sad, upsetting story, as is this one. Now this is the, um, it's from Faking It Tears of a Crime, that's where I've seen this story. I have seen it on other things, but that's where I, I watched a lot of, uh, what I'm about to tell you. Um, and it's the so-called honor killing of Shafila Ahmed. Now I say so-called because uh, I find it very hard to say honor killing. They, they don't go together, those two words, honor and killing. It, 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 it doesn't go together. Honor's like a, yeah, I suppose it's, it's like a, a positive word killing's obviously negative to put the two together i just think I, d I don't agree with it it's not an honor killing it's a killing that's what it is so that's why i've said the so-called honor killing of shafili ahmed now like i say this happened three years before banazi's story um and it, it actually went on for a very very long time to get justice for this girl um, like I say, her name's Shafila Ahmed. Her, she had a nickname, Shaf, you know, for short. She was born on the 14th of July, 1986, in Warrington, in Cheshire. Um, actually, no, she wasn't born there. I think she was born in Bradford and they moved to Warrington, in Cheshire. Iftika is her dad and Fazana is her mum. Um, she has three younger sisters and a younger brother. Um... Now her family is the Sunni, Sunni S U double N I, a branch of Islam, and um, they're native Punjabi speakers. Um, now Shafilia, she went to the Great Sankey High School, obviously in Warrington, um, and then in two thousand and three she moved on to Priestley College. Now Shafilia, I've seen so many pictures of her. I've seen a couple of videos of her. She's gorgeous absolutely stunning girl um a level student you know very focused she wanted to be a solicitor you know someone a, a child you would take pride in you you, you would she was like I say she was a level you know a level student she was she knew where she was going now what it was is shafelia was within an environment where she was torn between the Western civilization, obviously she's living in, and her home life, which is very traditionally Muslim, um, you know, and her parents didn't like that. They thought she was becoming too Westernized uh, with regards to her clothes and her music, and you know, and she feel it said by her friend she did, you know, she'd look at boys as well. She was 17, you know, now I'm a 17 year old girl that doesn't, you know, look, she didn't do anything 
you know, she was she wasn't running off with anyone. She was very focused on her um in uh, her her studies and everything else. She had a, a part time job at a call centre. Now this girl was going places. She was, but like I say, she was she was torn between two worlds, and that um you know regards to the Muslim culture and obviously Western culture. I can't imagine how that would be to live one life outside and then live another life when you get home. I suppose we all, I know when I was at school, you know, how I was at school, I was different to when I got home. You know, we come from an Irish family and, you know, in in society now, it's, um, you know, it's very feminist and, you know, not uh, it's hard to explain but i came from where you would cook and clean and you know mom did all those roles that was the role of mom and i don't see anything wrong with that and i'll probably get a thousand comments saying you know we've come so far as women you know i, I don't you know i i I'd, I'd, I'd live your life i've said it before on my stories you live your life let other people live theirs. You know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't get involved in how people have, you, in, in, in their upbringing, that's how they've been brought up, that's how they think, you know, and it's up to that person as they grow to maybe see a different side. And I think that's what was happening with Shafelia. You know, she was maybe felt stifled. So, I can understand to a degree, um, you know, my, uh, you know, I wasn't allowed to wear short skirts, things like that, you know, um, so I can understand being torn, but not to her degree, like she wasn't allowed to wear short sleeves, have any part of her showing, you know, that was just the, the, the her family, that was the culture, that was traditional for her, and her family were trying to keep her on that path, I believe. Um, but this is what I'm saying. She was a good girl. She was a genuinely good girl. She wasn't running off. She wasn't running around with boys. You know, she was a... She she was, she was. had so much to live for. And during a trip to Pakistan in 2003, um, it was said that she was taken there... Um, for perhaps an arranged slash forced marriage. That was the plan of her parents. That's why they took her there. Well, Shafelia was very strong-minded. She knew what she wanted. She knew where she was going in life. And she she didn't want to get married. She was 17. She didn't want to get married. That wasn't for her. And they'd lined up various suitors for her, who she dismissed completely. Um, you know, when she was at this family wedding. Um, and I think, it's very sketchy this part, but it said that Shafelia on this trip swallowed bleach. Um, now, there's people saying that it was just, it was too much for her and it was a cry for help, perhaps trying to commit suicide. Her family... Um, they said what it was in Pakistan, um, things aren't thrown away, everything's kept. And it was a mouthwash bottle, um, that bleach had been put into to reuse the bottle. Shafelia had thought it was mouthwash. But you don't swallow mouthwash. You and spit it out. So, uh, it was, it was questioned, it was questioned and... You know, she was in an awful lot of pain um, to the point that when they got back home to Warrington, they had to rush her to the hospital um, because she couldn't even, she couldn't even get spit, like saliva into it. She must have been in agony. And you'd like to think it was an accident, but it doesn't make sense that it was swallowed. That doesn't make sense, especially based on the mouthwash theory. Um, you know, some maybe it was a cry for help from Shafelia. Um, 
Now, on the 11th of September 2003, Shvelia disappears. Disappears. She'd been missing for a week and her teachers, this is what I mean, she was such a focused student that her teachers recognised she wasn't in. She, you know, she wasn't in class. They notified the police after asking a few of her friends, everyone says they haven't seen her. They notified the police, not her parents. They do. Um, no, the police obviously went round to Shafelia, spoke to Iftika and Fazana, who were very dismissive, said she'd run away before. She was a rebellious teenager, um, you know, which, say for, say for, uh, say a white child, possibly, but given that Shafelia was from such a strict traditional household, to pass it off as teenage rebellion, it it contradicted itself, you know. And the police, they, they you know they they weren't really buying this story. Um, now, while Shafili was missing, a lady by the name of Shabna Galati. Now, Shab Shabna Shabna or Shab I think it's Shabna. Um, she was in Coronation Street. I can't remember. The character she played, I don't really watch Coronation Street, um, but I do vaguely remember watching it at the time when she was in it, um, and she was with a character called Dev, she was married to him, um, and she spoke at a, a press conference, and she read out a poem that had been found when they'd been, you know, searching the family home, and the poem was actually called I Feel Trapped. Um, you know, perhaps speaking to Shafelia's feelings at the time. Um, now, the papers and the media immediately started um, pointing at Alana Killing. You know, police never, they never uttered those words, they would, it was a missing person, but this is what the media was putting out. So, the you know the parents automatically denied this and they they were interviewed um and in the interview which is where the show i watch comes into play it's called faking it is for crime and they analyze people's interviews whether it be in the police station whether it be on tv you know for news news crews and stuff and this one was in their home oh god their home was beautiful absolutely beautiful lovely home and Iftika, obviously Shavelia's dad, and Fasana, her mum. Her mum didn't say anything. You know, she sat very quiet, timid, reminding me a little bit of Banaz Mahmood's mum. Um, you know, let Iftika take the main role, and he was the one who spoke. And what was noticed when he was talking about Shavelia, he never mentioned her name. He never mentioned our daughter. It was the daughter. And, you know, when asked, is this because maybe she didn't want to get married, that subject was broad, you know, brought up. Um, he said, and I noticed it at the time, it was the daughter doesn't want to get married. She, she's not, the, the, the daughter's not ready to get married yet. It was very odd the way he was talking about it, it was very cold. Like I said, there was no mention of her name. Um, but he said, he said something, you know, they think that people like us. And the, uh, you know, the, the interviewer was like, what do you mean? He says, well, Muslims, they presume that that's what we've done. And the interviewer, so, in, you know, the interviewer is saying, well, done what? And he's like, well, they think we've killed our own daughter. And he, it opened the door then, the interviewer was like, well, did you? And he's like, N no. Has a break, we wouldn't dream of it. it. It was just a very, very odd interview. Very, very odd. Considering your daughter's missing, you know, this could help find her. And it was, it was just a, a, a defensive interview of themselves. Um... He obviously putting it down that it was racial, the police were racially profiling the family because they were Muslim. Um, now in February 2004, oh, it's such a shame. Um, so we're talking 
September, October, November, December, January, February. Five months. Five months. Shvelia's body was found in the River Kent near Sedgwick. There'd been a, a like a storm, um, and the river, had, I think, burst its banks, and you know, Shvelia's body had appeared. Now, on the show, like I said, that I've watched, it doesn't say anything um graphic about the finding of Shevelia. When I've looked online it states that um a femur was found suggesting that she was dismembered. Now that I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's substantiated. I don't know. That's just a, another side that I read. So there's no proof in that it wasn't said on the show. And they do say in some of the stories that have been said on that show when someone has you know been dis dismembered by the perpetrator of the crime so for it not to be mentioned i just find that a bit odd i don't know if there was gory hunters online i don't know um but yes yeah, she was found february 2004 obviously identified um Shafelia's parents straight away were arrested with uh, I think it's five other members of the family um, with no evidence they had to be released um, and like I say they 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 done a lot of interviews to the point where they were they were getting cocky they were actually getting cocky you could see it. they were very confident in their interviews from the early stages where they um, the press conference I spoke about, they burst in the doors. They weren't invited to the press conference. Apparently, it's a, a standard thing um, for the first press conference. And then maybe they'd bring their family in then to request help. But they burst in with a solicitor, with a with a, a you know a pre written statement saying, you know, we don't know what's happened to our daughter. We've got nothing to do with it. It was. You know, they were saying, we haven't murdered our daughter. So they hadn't been accused of it at the time. Shavelia was just missing at the time. It was, you know, it was just defence straight away rather than concern for this missing daughter of theirs. It, it was just very odd. Um, now, January 2008, so we're talking four years later, um, the coroner's inquest... Um, it just said that Shafila had been the victim of a very vile murder, which it said that the family tried to get changed to, uh, I think it was an open verdict. They didn't like that it had been put as murder. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't. It, it's, if you haven't done anything, you'd want it down as murder. So that case stays open. Um, but basically the, the police didn't have anything and Shafili's case was shelved for for a few years, years, because they just, there was no proof. They couldn't find who, what had happened to this poor girl. Um, 25th of August, 2010. So we're talking seven years, seven years. Um, well, she was found in 2004. So six years. Six and a half years after she was found, Shafelia's little sister. Now, you do see her on one of the family videos at the wedding that Shafelia had gone to. Um, her little sister, Alicia, who at that point had become the eldest in the family. Like I said, Shafelia had had four siblings, Alicia being the next one down. Alicia seemed to me to actually be a rebel. Shafelia wasn't, but it seemed Alicia was. And she arranged for the family home to be robbed while they were all in bed. It was arranged by her. Um, now, her parents, Iftika and Fazana, they wanted her arrested. They wanted her charged. They said it was her that had set this whole thing up. I just think you've got one daughter who's been murdered, the other girl... As, I mean, it's disgraceful that she'd done that to the family. But it you'll see why in a second. When she was arrested, she told the police that it was her parents that killed Shafelia straight away. Obviously, in defence of what she was being charged with. And she was 
literally like, hang on a minute, let me tell you what my parents did. And that's why I meant with the parents phoning the police on her. You know, you've got this massive family secret. How cocky are you to believe that you can phone the police on your child? Who's already tried to get rob your house. So she hasn't really got a lot of um, fear there. And you've put her in the hands of people who can, who can get you charged with murder. That's how cocky they were. Um, she said, um, yes, the marriage refusal of Shafili in, in Pakistan, the parents feared that that would bring great shame upon the family. You know, they've got this rebel daughter. Um, and on the night Shafili disappeared, the 11th of September 2003, she'd been at work at the call centre and when her mum had picked her up, she feared her had come out and she didn't have her arms covered. So it said that there were that the mum and she feared were rowing in the car, quite a you know, an aggressive argument that continued into the house. Um and Alicia said she could hear this from upstairs and she came down into the kitchen. Um her other two sisters and brother were already in the kitchen, like kind of watching it unfold in the living room. And she said when she walked into the kitchen, she seen that Fazana and Iftika were actually beating Shafilia um, on the on the settee, on the sofa. Um, and Shafilia's mum, who I said was very, appeared very timid on camera, you know, the good, quiet wife, was the instigator in... Shafelia's death by saying to the dad finish it finish it do it and he put a plastic bag into Shafelia's throat and she suffocated her on the family sofa um she Alicia said that as she was looking she seen the light go out of Shafelia's eyes she actually watched that happen could you imagine your sister who you are so close to and you've just seen that happen and rather than be mortified that their younger children were watching this you know sending them away you know saying it's I, I don't know how you would what you would say to them but you certainly wouldn't shouldn't say you know if you go against us Lord Shavelia did that will happen to you and that's what the mum told those kids They've just seen their sister murdered. And she gives them that warning. Um, so it does show that God, Alicia, she, she was very brave. She was very, very brave. I think the parents never thought she'd turn, even when they, you know, told the police it was her who'd, who'd robbed the house. They, even then, they thought she's never, she'll never say what this family secret. Right? She'd be too scared. And Alicia said that when she went upstairs, um, she ran upstairs after this had happened, she looked out the window to see her dad wrapping, uh, with Shafilia wrapped in like a blanket and just throwing her in the boat of the car. That was their eldest daughter. Because she didn't want to marry the person you chose, she did. it wasn't, I don't believe it was the person they chose for her, who I believe was a, a cousin, a, a, you know, she didn't want to get married, she had plans, you know, was that so bad? Shouldn't you be proud of your children for aspiring to, you know, not live a life on the dole or, you know, you that should be a, you know, that should be honourable that your children want to go on and do great things with their life. She had plans. She was working. She was 17. She wasn't sitting around the house, staying in bed till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, walking the streets at night. She had on a t shirt. She showed her arms and she didn't want to get married at 17. And it cost her her life. I just. That's why I say so-called honour killing. 
because I don't think there's any honour in that, you know, and it is something I, I, I don't understand, you know, and there's, I don't mean any offence to anyone watching this video, I genuinely don't, but I think if you believe something like that is honourable, then, I you know, so much has changed in the world. I know things of the past, you know, and the way of doing things, even 40, 50 years ago, you know, the world was a very different place. But I think as the world moves on and you're raising children within that world, you've got to, there's got to be a part of you that thinks we've got to move on as well. Now, I'm not saying go against your belief system or anything else. I don't mean that. You know, I have beliefs of my own. But to murder your own child, surely that should go against every belief you have. It, it Surely it, it's got to be the worst thing you can do. Not an honourable thing. I just, I just, I'd, you know... It just, it, it just, I don't, I've got no words. I, I genuinely haven't. I've, I struggle. I struggled with this one. Um, now, the trial began for Iftika and for Zana on, in May 2012. Um, I know, so we're talking nine years after Shafili went missing. Nearly a decade it took. Um, now, the sentence was on the 3rd of August 2012 and they were both sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years each. Which I thought, you know, considering we do see some sentences that are disgusting, you know, this should see them into their later stages of life, you know, where hopefully that they can't do anything like this to their you know, their children. You know, I don't know what Alicia's doing now. I don't know if after doing this to her parents, which I would assume would be, again, very dishonourable within the community. I don't know if she had to disappear. There's not a lot said about it. Um, now, for what has come from it, on the 14th of July, 2015, which is Shafelia's birthday, or would have been Shafelia's birthday, um, is the National Day of Memory for Victims of Honour Killings. Um, now, this is organised by the Leeds-based charity, Karma Nirvana, um, and it's held annually on Shafelia's birthday. Um, you know, just to honour the victims of so-called honour killings. You know, it's not an honour killing, it's a murder. That's what it was. You murdered your child. It it, it, it doesn't have any other name. It doesn't. Um, and th the sad thing is, is only three years later, a year after the charity, you know, was organised, we have the murder, the hon honour killing, so-called of Banaz Mahmood. Now, if you haven't watched it, like I say, it's called Honour. Um, very, very sad. Very, very sad. Um, this this girl's crying against her family. Was she fell in love? She fell in love with a guy. And that was... Obviously, she, she dishonoured her family by that. It's just... It's scary. It's a scare. It must be very scary for these girls who, like I say, have been brought up. They're torn. They're torn, and it must be so hard, so hard to live up to your parents' expectations and beliefs when you leave the house. There's a very different world out there. Now, I'm not saying that. Like I say, I, I'm not saying that it's good for your kids to be sitting in bed or lying in bed till one o'clock in the afternoon you know and, and not going out to work you, you know I'm not saying that's any any good but I just mean it's um when you see a child that 
he's an A-level student, he's working, he's doing well in life. But is there to be ashamed of that because she didn't want to get married? I don't understand. But, um, yeah, that was the story of Shafili Ahmed. Very, very sad story. Um, and like I say, yeah, Karma Nirvana is the name of the charity. And it's, it's nice to know that, obviously, the victims, you know, there is something to honour the victims. Um, and, yeah, that was... That was my story this week. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, any stories you'd like me to look at, please let me know. Um, it'd be nice if you could like the video. I'd really appreciate that. And, yeah, thank you for joining me again, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.